it was a dramatic story. I mean, you, you couldn't beat it in terms of a good newspaper story. You had children dying, you had a town isolated, cut off from the, from the world. You had the worst weather on record. So this sort of captured everyone's imagination. Balto rose to the occasion. He went through a blizzard, he went through shifting ice. He was a smart dog. Big festivities in Central Park, New York, as Balto, the Siberian Husky who saved Nome, Alaska, attends the unveiling of his statue. The hero dog was accompanied by his musher, the Norwegian Gunnar Kossel. Central Park has doesn't have all that many statues and sculptures, so for Central Park to erect a statue of a dog just gives an idea of just how famous Balto had become. Everyone in, in, in the United States knew about the, the serum run while it was going on. So not surprisingly, Hollywood jumped on it straight away. Here, here's the dog that saved Nome, Alaska. They actually put Balto up in a, in a famous hotel, the Biltmore Hotel, and, you know, they treated him like royalty. Movie stars showed up, you know, women in beautiful fur coats, and, you know, there was a certain amount of glamour that kind of uh, attached to the story. His story is a Los Angeles story comes from the country to the big city, enters Hollywood, and is used by Hollywood, and then ends on Skid Row. Det var i gullgraverbyen Nome at Balto ble født i 1919. Balto vokste opp til å bli en hund som var lett å kjenne igjen. You know, by any standards, Balto was a cute-looking dog. I mean, he had a white chest, black hair. He had such distinct markings. You know, those two front legs with the, you know, it looks like he's wearing white socks, a little sock and a big sock. And, you know, it's irresistible. Lots of dogs have markings, but when did you ever see a dog with, you know, two front socks? I mean, the dog is really cute. Men Baltos nusselige utseende var til ingen hjelp. Han var bare en vanlig arbeidshund i kennelen hos eieren, nordmannen Leonard Seppala. He had like A-dogs and B-dogs, and the A-dogs were the racers, because he was this famous racer. Balto was a B-dog. Balto was never one of his favorite dogs, so, you know, he, he didn't know or care about Balto, not really. Balto var for stor og tung til å bli en løpshund, mente Seppala, og kastrerte han. Balto var bare egnet til hardt arbeid. Men så skulle et sett av tilfeldigheter forvandle den anonyme sliteren til Amerikas mest berømte hund. En difteriepidemi rammet det vinterisolerte Nome i januar 1925. I byen utspante seg hjerteskjærende scener, siden difteri er en sykdom som tar livet av barn først. 
it was a painful way for, for a child to die and a painful way for the parents to actually watch their child suffer like this because it's, it's a slow choking. Det eneste som kunne stanse epidemien var antitoxin serum. Men denne medisinen var blitt uteglemt da vinterforsyningene ble brakt inn. Livene til alle de 1500 innbyggerne ville stå i fare om ikke medisin ble fraktet inn fort. Every hour, every minute counted. Serumet måtte fraktes fra Anchorage, men jernbanen gikk bare til den ene. Derfra var det tusen kilometer frem til Nome gjennom noe av verdens mest ugjestmille bilmark. Bare hundespann kunne ta seg frem. Balto og kjøreren hans, Gunnar Kåsen, ble sammen med 19 andre hundespann plukket ut til å kjøre stafett. Det ble et kappløp med døden. Forfatter Lainey Salisbury har skrevet bok om den dramatiske redningsoperasjonen som ble satt i gang. By sheer coincidence, as that epidemic hit Nome, there was a storm front gathering off of Alaska, and it was moving right across the Sierra Run Trail. So these drivers were hitting the worst, um, the worst weather on record for, uh, I think it was, you know, 25 years, I think. Uh, on an average day, you wouldn't be traveling at 50 below zero. You'd be home sitting by the fire. And uh, so the, that, that's the extraordinary part, is that uh, they did go out and the weather didn't have an, uh, an effect on them at all. You're easy. Howard Farley is a nestor blant hundekjørerne i Alaska. Uh, I had studied the serum run and, and I knew about Leonard Seppla and, and these were my idols. I mean, the serum run w was an epic. I, I call it an epic because it was, a, a, it was one of the greatest things. Doug Mushing's greatest hour. De fleste etappene ned mot kysten ble kjørt av indianere og eskimoer som bodde i innlandet. Men selv for disse mest erfarne hundekjørerne var det å legge ut i januar svært risikabelt. Well, uh, Alaska, it's a dangerous place where you can literally lose your life. There are mountain passes, there are crevices, there are rivers that they had to cross. The, I mean, the Yukon River may be frozen on top, but it's, you know, underneath the ice is moving. And that sometimes just surges up and can create a hole and the dog team can go right in it. Til tross for sprengkulen var det ingen som trakk seg eller la seg ned for å vente på bedre vær. And this is when people took that extra, that extra stride that they wouldn't ordinarily do uh, because they understood the, uh, the reason, the reason that the children were suffering. So it's sort of an unwritten code of Alaska that you had to help your neighbor when someone was in trouble because that was the only way people could survive in Alaska. So um, a lot of these men, they didn't even question it. N um, afterwards, I don't think any, any of them ever asked to be reimbursed for the dogs that died. Um, they didn't ask to be reimbursed for their time. They just accepted this as one of the codes of being an Alaskan. Mm -hmm. 